Raila Odinga. Raila Amolo Odinga, born on the 7th of January 1945, is a Kenyan politician, former member of parliament for Langata, and businessman who served as the prime minister of Kenya from 2008 to 2013. He is assumed to be the leader of opposition in Kenya since 2013. Odinga is the presidential candidate for ODM under the Azimiola Umoja One Kenya coalition for the presidential elections for in August 2022, having been cleared by the IEBC on 5th of June 2022. Prior to this, he, is uns he, he unsuccessfully contested the presidential election four times, that is 1997, 2007, 2013, and 2017. Now let's look at the early life and education. Raila Odinga was born at the Anglican Church Missionary Society Hospital in Maseno, Kisumu District, Nyanza Province, that is on 7th January 1945, to Mary Juma Odinga and Jaramogi Oginga Odinga. His father served as the, as the first vice president of Kenya under President Jomo Kenyatta. He is a member of the Luo ethnic group. He went to Kisumu Union Primary and Maranda High School where he studied until 1962 when he was transferred to his father by his father to Germany. Raila spent the next two years at the Hada Institution, which trained foreign students in the German language and was part of the philological, philological faculty at the University of Leipzig in East Germany. He received a scholarship that, that is in 1965, sent him to the Technical Hostel, that's Technical College of Modernburg, now part of Otto von Gerk University, Magdeburg in the GDR. In 1970, Raila graduated with a diploma roughly equivalent to a master's degree in mechanical engineering and welding. While studying in East Germany during the Cold War, as a Kenyan, he was able to visit West Berlin through Checkpoint Charlie. When visiting West Berlin, he used to smuggle goods not available in East Berlin and bring them to his friends in East Germany. Let's look at Raila's career. Odinga returned in Kenya in 1970, and in 1971, he founded the Standard Processing Equipment Construction and Erection Limited, later renamed East African Spectre, the only company manufacturing liquid petroleum gas cylinders in Kenya. In 1974, Odinga was appointed Group, group Standards Manager of the Kenya Bureau of Standards. After holding this position for four years, he was promoted to be the deputy director in 1978, a post he held until his 1982 detention. Political career of Raila Odinga. 1982 Kenyan Cope attempt. At 3 a.m. on Sunday, First, August 1982, a group of soldiers from the Kenya Air Force led by senior private Hezekiah Ochuka attempted to overthrow the government of the then President Daniel Teroitich Arap Moi. After, he failed, after the failed attempt to overthrow him, President Moi reorganized Kenya's security architecture, staffing it with his loyalists. And then he ensured a law was passed in parliament that gave him emergency powers while placing the provincial administration under the office of the president. Odinga was arrested and charged with treason, treason after being accused of being among the masterminds of the 1982 COP. He was released six years later in February 1988, but detained again in August of the same year to be released in June 1989. 
In an era of unrelenting human rights abuse by the Kenyan government, Odinga was placed under house arrest for seven months after evidence seemed to implicate him, along with his father, the late Oginga Odinga, for collaborating with the plotters of a failed coup attempt against President Daniel Arap Moi in 1982. Hundreds of Kenyan civilians and thousands of rebel soldiers died in the coup. Several foreigners also died. Odinga was later charged with treason and detained without trial for six years. A biography a biography released 14 years later in July 2006, apparently with Odinga's approval, indicated that Raila Odinga was far more involved in the attempted coup than he had previously admitted. After its publication, some members of parliament in Kenya called for Odinga to be arrested and charged. But the statu statute of limitations had already passed and the information contained in the biography did not amount to an open confession on his part. Among some of his painful experience was when his mother died in 1984, but the prison wardens took two months to inform him after her death. After he was released, he was released on 6th of February 1988, only to be rearrested in September 1988 for his pro-democracy and human rights, human rights agitation at a time when the country continued to descend deep into the throes of poor governance and the deportation despotism of single-party rule. Multi-party democracy in Kenya was then, by law, a one-party state. His encounters with the authoritarian government generated an aura of intrigue about him, and it was probably due to this that his political followers christened him a guambo, which in law mean the mystery or unpredictable, or Jacob, meaning chairman. Odinga was released on the 12th of June 1989, only to be in incarcerated again on 5th of July 1990, together with Kenneth Matiba and former Nairobi Mayor Charles Rubia, both multi-party system and human rights crusaders. Odinga was finally was finally released on 21st of June 1991 and in October he fled the country to Norway amid indications that the increasingly corrupt Kenyan government was attempting to assassinate him without a success. We can't go without remembering Odinga's multi-party politics. At the time of Odinga's departure to Norway, the Forum for the Restoration of democracy Ford, a movement formed to agitate for the return of multi-party democracy to Kenya, was newly formed. In February 1992, Odinga returned to join Ford, then led by his father Jaramogi Oginga Odinga. He was elected vice chairman of the General Purposes Committee of the party. In the months running up to the 1992 general election, Ford split into Ford Kenya led by Odinga's father, Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, and Ford Asili led by Kenneth Matiba. Odinga became Ford Kenya's deputy director of elections. Odinga won the Langata constituency parliamentary seat, previously held by Philip Leakey of Kanu. Odinga became the second father of multi-party democracy in Kenya after Kenneth Matiba. When Jaramogi Oginga Odinga died in January 1994 and Michael Ki Wamalwa Kijana succeeded him as Ford Kenya chairman, Odinga challenged him for the party leadership. The elections were mad with controversy after which Odinga resigned from Ford Kenya to join the National Development Party, NDP. Let's look at Odinga serving as the member of parliament. In his first bid for the presidency in the 1997 general election, Odinga finished third after President Moi, the incumbent and Democratic Party candidate Mwai Kibaki. He, however, retained his position as the Langata MP. In a surprise move, Odinga decided to support Moi, his arch enemy, even entering into a political merger between his party, NDP, and Moi's much-hated Kanu party, which may 
which many Kenyans likened to the yoke of oppression. The merger was called New Kanu. Previous admirers of Odinga now saw him as a sellout to a curse he had once championed by closing ranks with a despot. He accepted a position in Moy's cabinet as energy minister, serving from June 2001 to 2002 during Moy's final term. In a subsequent Kanu elections held later that year, he was elected the party's secretary general, replacing Joseph Kamodo. It was apparent to many that Odinga hoped to ascend to the presidency through Kanu and with Moy's support. In 2002, March to the chagrin of Odinga and many other hopefuls in the party, Moi endorsed Uhuru Kenyatta, son of the Kenya's first president, Muse Jomo Kenyatta, but a relative newcomer in politics, to be his successor. Moi publicly asked Odinga and others to support Uhuru as well. This was taken as an affront by many of the party loyalists who felt they were being asked to make way for a newcomer who and like them, had done little to build the party and had no experience. Odinga and other Kanu members, including Kalonzo Msioka, George Saitoti, and Joseph Kamodo, opposed this step, arguing that the then 38 year old Uhuru was politically inexperienced and lacked the leadership qualities needed to govern the country. Moi stood his ground, maintaining that the country's leadership needed to pass to the younger generation. A decent run through the party with some members openly disagreeing with Moy, despite his reputation as an autocrat. It was then that the Rainbow Movement was founded, comprising disgruntled Kanu members who exceeded Kanu. The exodus led by Odinga saw most big names fleeing the party. Moy was left with his hand picked successor, almost alone, with the party reduced to an empty shell with poor electoral prospects. The Rainbow Movement went on to join the Liberal Democratic Party, LDP, which later teamed up with opposition Mwai Kibaki's National Alliance Party of Kenya, NAC, a coalition of several other parties to form the National Rainbow Coalition, NARC. Amid fears that his opposition super alliance would fail to unite and rally behind a common candidate as in previous occasion and thus easily hand victory to the government, Odinga declared Kibaki Tosha, Swahili for Kibaki, is sufficient. An endorsement of, Ki of a Kibaki ticket, this resolved this resolved the matter of candidacy and NAC went on to defeat Moy's protege Uhuru Kenyatta. The opposition won a landslide 67% of the vote, dealing an, a humiliating blow to Moy. Odinga led the campaign for, for Kibaki throughout the country while Kibaki was bedridden and incapacitated following an accident. While on his way back to Nairobi from a campaign meeting at Machakos Junction, 40 kilometers from Nairobi, in which he sustained injuries. On assuming office, President Kibaki did not appoint Odinga as prime minister in the new government. Contrary to a pre-election memorandum of understanding, Kenya's constitution had no provision for prime minister yet. Neither did he give LDP, that's Odinga's faction, half of the cabinet position as per the MOU. He, insists, he instead sought to entrench and increase his own NAC side in cabinet, even appointing MPs from the opposition parties, Kanu and Ford people, to the cabinet. He perceived betrayal, started a simmering disquiet, which in time led to an open rebellion and split within the cabinet. A key point of disagreement was a proposed new constitution for the country, which was a major campaign issue that had united Kibaki Snack and Odinga's LDP in the campaign. This constitution included provisions to trim presidential powers to reign in, in what was seen in what was seen as an auto truck autocratic presidency, a feature of both the Moi and first president Jomo Kenyatta's regimes, which had led to a lot of power abuse and uncountable leadership. The 2005 referendum 
Once in power, however, Kibaki go Kibaki's government instituted a constitutional committee which turned around and submitted a draft constitution that was perceived to consolidate presidential powers and weaken regional governments contrary to the pre-election draft. Odinga opposed this and went on to campaign with his LDP cabinet colleagues on the referendum no side, opposing the president and his lieutenants in a bruising countrywide campaign. When the document was put to a referendum on 21st of November 2005, the government lost by 57% to 43% margin. Embarrassingly for Kibaki, out of eight provinces, only one, that is central province where his tribe the Kikuyu are dominant, voted yes for the document, isolating his own tribe from the rest of Kenya and exposing his campaign as ethnic-based. A shell-shocked and disappointed President Kibaki sacked the entire cabinet on the 23rd of November the 2005. When it was reconstituted two weeks later, Odiga and the entire LDP group were left out. Orange Democratic Movement, ODM Odinga led the formation of a new opposition outfit, the Orange Democratic Movement known as the ODM. And orange was the symbol for the no vote in the, in the constitutional referendum. In January 2006, Odinga was reported to have told police that he believed his life was in danger, having received assassination threats. In March 2008, 2018, Raila and Uhuru had a political handshake and intended to cool the political temperatures after the 2017 general election. The handshake gave birth to the Building Bridges Initiative, alias BBI. So guys, we have just cut short our history and decided to bring you closer to the 2022 general election. Let's look at the Building Bridges Initiative, that is BBI. Following the March 2018 truce between Odinga and President Kenyatta, the two commissioned a joint task force that would collect views from Kenyans and report their findings. After touring the country and holding consultative sessions, the team compiled and submitted the report to President Kenyatta at State House, Nairobi on 26th of November 2019, which was followed by a public launch at the Bombers of Kenya the following day. The efforts by President Kenyatta and Mr. Odinga to bring peace and cohesion in the country were applauded by several leaders locally and internationally, with the duo being invited to the international lunch in Washington, D.C., USA in February 2020. The Building Bridges Initiative was therefore termed null and void by the courts in Kenya as per the Constitution. Constitution. Odinga was appointed High Representative for Infrastructure Development at the African Union Commission in 2008. On the, on the 10th of December 2021, Odinga announced that he will be eyeing a fifth stab at the presidency, putting an end to months of suspense after his surprise truce with President Kenyatta. His announcement was made while launching the Azimiola Umoja Convention, which will be his vehicle to State House, held at the Kasarani Stadium. Let's get back to 2000 presidential election. On the 12th of July 2007, with Kibaki's re-election bid drawing close, Odinga alleged that the government was withholding identity cards from voters in opposition strongholds with the intention to skew the election in favor of Kibaki. He also claimed that the intended creation of 30 new constituencies was a means by the government to fraudulently engineer victory in the, 20, in the December 2007 parliamentary elections. In August 2007, Odinga's own ODM, Kenya suffered a setback when it split into two, with Odinga becoming, becoming the head of the Orange Democratic Movement, ODM, while the, while the other faction, the ODMK, was headed by Kalonzo Msioka, who parted ways with Odinga. On September 1st, 2007, the ODM elected Odinga as its presidential candidate in a national ladies' conference held at the Moy International Sports Center, Kasarani, 
in Nairobi. Odinga received 2,656 votes. The only other candidates who received significant numbers of votes were Musale Amdavadi with 391 and William Ruto, 368. Earlier, Najib Balala had withdrawn his candidature and endorsed Odinga. The defeated candidates expressed their support for Odinga afterwards, and Mudavadi was named his running mate. Odinga then launched his presidential campaign in Huru Park in Nairobi on the 6th of October 2007. Odinga's bid for the presidency, however, failed when, after the 27th of 27 December presidential election, the Electoral Commission declared Kibaki the winner on 30th December 2007, placing him ahead of Odinga by about 232,000 votes. Jeffrey Sachs, a professor of economics and director of the Earth Institute at Columbia University and a special advisor to former UN Secretary General, faulted the United States' approach to the post-election crisis and recommended an independent recount of the vote. Odinga and his ODM leaders rallied against the decision with James Orengo and Professor Nyongo calling for mass action. Later, violence broke out in the country. The government's response was heavy was heavy-handed as it deployed police and para paramilitary units to counter public protests. Following two months of unrest, which led to the death of about a thousand people and displacement of about 250,000, a deal between Odinga and Kibaki, which provided the, for power sharing and the creation of for the post of prime minister, was signed in February 2008. It was brokered by former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan. Odinga was sworn in as the second prime minister along with the power sharing cabinet on the 17th of april 2008 the post of prime minister was last held by jomo kenyatta between 1963 and 1964 following independence odinga is thus the second person in kenyan history to hold the position the next presidential election in which odinga was was to run was the 2013 March poll involving Kibaki's handover of power and certainty loomed over Odinga's main rivals, Uru Kenyatta and William Ruto, who had both been indicated by the IECC of The Hague for their alleged role in the 2007 post-election violence. Despite their pending case, the duo had been nominated... The duo had been nominated by the Jubilee Party with Uhuru as presidential candidate and Ruto as running mate. Many felt they were unfit to run for office before clearing their names from such serious crimes, while others felt that their opponents were trying to unfairly exploit the situation by eliminating them from the rest and pave the way for their easy victory. A Sinovet survey released, on the, released in October 2012 found Odinga to enjoy a leading 45% approval rate, rate against Uhuru and Ruto. Odinga's party ODM joined Kalonso Musioka's Wiper Party and Moses Watangula's Ford Kenya in a code coalition, Coalition for Reforms and Democracy, for the presidential race with Odinga as the presidential candidate and Kalonso as his running mate to face Jubilee's coalition. Uhuru Kenyatta's the National Alliance TNA and William Ruyuto United Republican Party URP, Charity Gilus National Rainbow Coalition NAC and Najib Alala's Republican Congress RC. A number of Western countries were not in favor of the Uhuru and Ruto candidacy. In, in, in view of their pending ICC cases and association with crimes against humanity, former UN, UN Secretary General Kofi Annan voiced his reservation, as did former U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for African Affairs John Carson, who cautioned against the election of Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto. He was notably quoted as saying that, that in quotes, choices have, have consequences, referring to the fate of U.S.-Kenyan relations with the Uhuru administration. Odinga ran for president in the election held on 4th March 2013 and garnered 5,340,546 votes, that's a 43.70%, out of the 12,221,053 21,053 valid votes cast. The winner, that's Uhuru Kenyatta, got 6,173,433 votes. That's a 50.51%. As this was above the 50 
percent plus one volt threshold. Uhuru won it on the first round without requiring a runoff between the top two candidates. The IEBC, that's the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, therefore officially declared, declared Uhuru Kenyatta the president elect on Saturday 9th March at 2.44 p.m. Uhuru was set to take office as Kenya's fourth president. However, in a press conference shortly after the results were announced, Odinga said the, that the election had been marred with massive failures of the biometric voter re registration BVR kits, avid electronic voter indications or poll books, RTS, that's the result transmission system or tallying system, and the RPS, result presentation or transmission system. He claimed that the manual tallying was suspect, leaving him no choice but to the Kenya presidential election petition 2013 contest the result in Kenya's highest court, the Supreme Court. An anticipation for the of the legal challenge, Odinga and his lawyers George Oraro, Ntula Kilozo, and James Orengo secretly in instructed Rajpal Siena, a management consultant from Barcelona, to carry out a for forensic investigation of the technology used in, in the Kenyan general election 2013, during which the IBC made claims on TV and media that there were technological challenges, that servers overloaded, and that the database crashed. Kenya's chief duct Kenya's then Chief Justice Dr. William Mutunga announced on Monday, 11th of March, that the Supreme Court was fully formed and ready to deliver its judgment within four days as, stipul as stipulated by the Constitution of Kenya. During a petition hearing, Chief Justice William Mutunga made a finding rejecting the second affidavit of Odinga, which comprised 900 pages, on the basis that it amounted to new evidence which is not permitted under the Constitution. Subsequently, the Supreme Court issued a ruling dismissing the petition on the 30th of March 2013. The Supreme Court, while declaring Uhuru the next president, also declared that the IEBC should not have included the invalid or spoiled votes in the calculation of the final figures and percentage. Chief Justice then, Willie Mutunga, also directed that the EACC, that's Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, and the DPP, Director of Public Prosecutions, carry out a criminal investigation of the IEBC in relation to the BVR, EVID, RTS, and RPS. After the Supreme Court dismissed his petition, Odinga flew to South Africa to avoid attending the inauguration of Uhuru Kenyatta held on the 9th of April 2013 at Moy Sports Complex, Kasarani. The swearing-in ceremony marked the end of his premiership. In an important development, the full investigation findings were published as the OPCO report on the website www.kenyalegal.com and inspired the documentary 50 Plus One, the inside story by KTN journalist John Namu and Mohammed Ali. This documentary examines the history of the election fraud and the history of corruption in the judiciary and in which Odinga claims that it cannot be ruled out that it was a deliberate Act, act or omission by the court not to subject the technical evidence to scrutiny, scrutiny because the outcome would uh, invalidate the entire election process and discredit the IEBC. Odinga, in the 20th, 2017, through his lawyers James Orengo, Otiende Amolo, and Clifford Ocheng, claimed that forces associated with his main competitor, Uhuru Megai Kenyatta, and hacked into the IEBC server and tampered with its database. He stated that the results that were being transmitted by IEBC were false because they had been manipulated by a computer algorithm designed to maintain an 11% gap between him and Uhuru's votes. As such, he proved the votes were not real vo votes cast by human voters, but the outcome of, of a computer-generated formula producing artificial values. This intrusion into IBC system, he further said, affected not just the presidential results, but the entire election, including the votes cast for MPs, senators, governors, and women representatives. 
He called the alleged intrusion the biggest vote theft in Kenya's history. Later, while vote tallying was still in progress and the country was awaiting the announcement of the final results, Odinga revealed that his team had received information from a confidential source in IBC indicating that results from its server showed him leading with an, an, an assailable 8 million votes over Uhuru 7 million votes. Based on this, he demanded he be declared the fifth president of Kenya. The IEBC, however, rejected Odiga's contention, saying the winner could not be announced before the tallying was complete, and also being an independent body, it could not be compelled by one of the candidates to announce the results. The IEBC finally announced the results, declaring Uhuru the winner with 8.2 million votes against Odiga's 6.7 million. The results showed massive losses for NASA, with Jubilee invading traditional NASA strongholds. NASA refused to recognize the results. Shortly after Uhuru's declared victory, violence was reported in some parts of the country, which are opposition strongholds. However, the violence was not of the scale witnessed in 2007 election aftermath and broke out only sporadically. Both Odinga and President Kenyatta called for a public calm. <laughs> After in initially declining to take his case to court on the grounds that the court had previously made an unfavorable judgment against him, Odinga reconsidered and lodged a petition. After two days of hearings, the judges in a majority 4-2 decision returned a verdict on 1st September annulling the presidential results and ordered a new election to be held within 60 days. The court decision read by Chief Justice David Maraga and widely viewed as unprecedented both in Africa and globally held that IBC failed to conduct the election in the manner provided by the Constitution and so could not stand. Despite the Supreme Court ruling, Odiga announced his withdrawal from the presidential election scheduled for 26th of October in the year 2017. On 10th October, the reason for his withdrawal was his belief that the election would again not be free or fair since no electoral process reforms had been made since the annulment of the last election, as well as various defecations which occurred from his coalition. The IBC later stated that Odinka had not officially withdrawn from the race for presidency and his name would still appear on the ballot on the 26th of October, among other candidates who contested the 8th August general election. This resulted in a violent uproar in various parts of the country some few days before and after the the repeat of polls, especially in the NASA-dominated zones. Alleged police brutality was reported as independent medic research organization IMLU cited 39 deaths and a high number of assault cases. On 30th January, Odinga staged a swearing-in ceremony in Nairobi where he named himself the People's President. Following his ceremony, TV stations across Kenya were taken off air. A month and a half later, on 9th of March, Odinga and President Huru Kenyatta made a joint televised appearance in which they referred to each other as brothers and agreed to put aside political differences to allow Kenya to move forward. This is where Odinga and Kenyatta agreed to petition the BBI that the Building Bridges Initiative, which failed through the Kenyan law courts. Let's look at the 2022 presidential election. I quote, I, Raila Amolo Odinga, having been faithful and committed to, a building, to building a national democratic and progressive Kenya in our lifetime, having worked with many patriotic Kenyans to achieve this goal, I do hereby accept to present myself as a presidential candidate at the presidential election on August 9, 2022, following a re the request and anonymous decision for this Azimula Umoja. End of quotes. Raila said this on the 10th day of December 2021. He was permitted to run for the presidency for the fifth time on June 5th, 2022. He filed his candidacy papers as a candidate for the Azimula Umoja One Kenya Coalition Party with the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, IBC.